Hey guys, welcome to Exotic Math, and today we're going to talk about something called the diagonal Ramsey number. I actually tried to record this lesson yesterday in a classroom, like with a chalkboard, only to discover that different colored chalk, which is something that I kind of need for this, um, this lecture, does not show up well on camera. But luckily I found out that I can actually draw on top of this webcam, so that's what I'm going to start doing. So a typical introduction to Ramsey theory involves the interesting fact that in any group of six people, there are either three mutual friends or three mutual strangers. Now, this is probably not something that's intuitive to you, or at least for me, it's not obvious, but it's something that's true, and we can mathematically prove it. The natural way of representing this problem mathematically is with a graph. So in this graph, the people are going to be the vertices, so they're going to look like white circles. And we're going to connect two vertices with, let's say, a blue line if they're friends, and with a red line if they're strangers. For example, here is a graph of four people, and we can connect them with a blue edge if these people are friends. So for example, let's make these two guys friends, and these two also, and we'll say that these two are also friends. And we can connect them then with a red edge if they're, if they're strangers. So the fundamental assumption here is that if people aren't friends, then they must be strangers. So these guys are strangers, and these two guys are strangers, and these two also. That was just an example, but now I want to actually prove that in any group of six people, there are either three mutual friends or three mutual strangers. Well, what does that mean in terms of our graph? What it means is, if we have a complete graph, meaning every two vertices share an edge, but we let that edge be either red or blue, in this case, red corresponds to strangers and blue corresponds to friends, then there's always going to be a triangle that is either red or blue. So here we have our group of six people represented as a graph of six vertices. And you can see that I've put one of the vertices over here to the left. This really isn't important, it's just going to make it easier for me to show how this proof is going to work. Basically, this guy on the left is going to have an edge with each one of these vertices on the right, each of five. And we know that each edge is either going to be blue, for if he's friends with them, or red, for if they're a stranger. But with each one, he's going to have either a blue or a red edge. The important thing here now is the pigeonhole principle, which is that, in this case, what we're going to say is there has to be at least three of one color, whether it be blue or red, right? Because each, each of these five is colored, so one of them has to have the majority. One of them has to be at least three. So let's say it's blue. We can connect a blue edge here to three of these vertices. Now notice, looking at these three guys here, I'm just going to dot them with white, looking at these three guys, if, either, if any two of them share a blue edge, we have our blue triangle, right? If, let's say, these two guys are friends, then you can see that we have a blue triangle. But on the other hand, what if no two of them share a blue edge, meaning no two of them know each other? Then we can say that they're all strangers, so they're all going to be connected by a red edge. But then you'll see we have a red triangle. So without loss of generality, meaning that if we had done it again and said that the first three were red lines, we run into the same situation where, by the pigeonhole principle, there must either be a red triangle or a blue triangle. We've now seen that in any graph of six vertices where each edge is colored either red or blue, and it's a complete graph, there must be either a blue triangle or a red triangle. But then the question is, what about if there were only five vertices? Uh, because we've shown that it, it must be the case that in six there's a red triangle or a blue triangle, but is that the smallest number for which that's true? In fact, it is, but we have to show this. Here's our graph of five vertices, and now we want to color all the edges in a way such that there's neither a blue triangle nor a red triangle. And we can do that. So all we have to do is find one example of a graph with five vertices where there's no triangles to show that there must be at least six. So you can see if I color it in this way, we have no red triangle. And if we fill in the remaining edges with blue, you'll see that there's no blue triangle either.
What we've really just shown is that the diagonal Ramsey number for n equals 3 is equal to 6. And we can denote this in this way. So that r of 3, 3 equals 6. So r of 3, 3 is what we call the diagonal Ramsey number for n equals 3. Of course, this can be generalized to r of nn. And what we mean by this diagonal Ramsey number is that any complete graph of r and n, n vertices, where each edge is either blue or red, contains a red or blue n-click. And what an n-click is, is just n vertices that are all pairwise connected. So basically, here's a three-click, just three vertices that are all connected. And here's a four-click. So a four-click is not a square. So this is not a four-click. Because the two on the diagonals aren't connected. This is a four-click. So that's what we mean by n-click. In the example that I just gave, what we had is a complete graph of some number of vertices that it was complete, meaning that every two vertices shared an edge. It was just a question of whether we colored it red or whether we colored it blue. Now, if you think about it, this is exactly the same as thinking about any sort of graph of that number of vertices and its complement. Because, because each one of these edges is either red or blue, that's the same as saying there's either an edge there or there isn't. So this is a question in this uh, concept of Ramsey theory can be equivalently stated for saying that, for example, in the one we just did, any graph of six vertices either has a three-click, which means a triangle, or its complement has a three-click. Three this begs the question, how many people do we need to invite to our dinner party to ensure that there are either four mutual friends or four mutual strangers? Or does such a number even exist? It could be the case that we could have a graph of arbitrarily many vertices, and yet we can avoid having either four mutual friends or four mutual strangers. In fact, the fundamental idea behind Ramsey theory is this theorem that this does exist, and that no matter what kind of configuration we pick, there's always going to be some number of vertices, that if we have a graph of that many vertices, it's going to contain this configuration, the subgraph, in either itself or its complement. We've proven that r of 3, 3 is equal to 6, right? First, we showed that it has to be less than or equal to 6, and then we gave a counterexample of size 5 to show that it has to be greater than 5, so it's 6. In the next video, I'm going to talk about r of 4, 4, and the value for this is 18, but the proof is a lot more interesting. So we're going to have to use a lot of different techniques from different parts of math, but it's still really cool. Uh, the reason that this is an open problem and something I think is interesting is that the value for r5,5 five, five is unknown. Even though a lot of mathematicians want to know what it is, it is just so hard to compute and so difficult that even though we know r33, three, three, r44, four, four, right now we do not know r of 5, 5. And a lot of people think that we'll never know some higher values such as r of 6, 6. So in the next video, I'm going to talk about r of 4, 4. Um, if you don't want to see that and you just want to learn about r of 5, 5, which is unknown, I would skip to the third one. So uh, thanks for watching and please leave any feedback.